I think a president has to be as accountable as everybody else to the criminal justice system or the whole system breaks down. There's a terrible hypocrisy in the system that shouldn't exist. So I think it's, by and large, it's going to be, it's going to be a circus at times, but I think it's going to be boring at times. Criminal justice does grind slowly, but I think it's going to be good for the rule of law, which is the basis of our democracy. Seems it never rains in Southern Okay, what do we got? It's Thursday. <laughs> Same clips every day, huh? So a little more work on this car, Steve's 03. Uh, finally, the interior trim is in every piece of it. I was dreading working on the shifter or the uh, e-brake handle rather, but wasn't too bad. So we received this little trim thing today. So the TPMS button or RDC tire pressure reset button is generally located down here in this trim panel in the center. Black birch anthracite I don't think was ever optioned on the M5 or available for the M5, so they never made a piece with a hole in it, or at least this one doesn't have a hole in it. So there's a guy online that 3D prints these adapter plates that kind of fit and work. I don't love it. I think there's room for improvement. It's a 3D printed piece. It's 15 bucks. You'll see that it's the wrong shade of black. Um, up Looking up close, it's also the wrong texture, though you really don't notice it in real life. Uh, but it does fit fairly well. It's smooth. It's flush. It covers up the button, so the button is completely flush, and then it presses into the dash as you push the button. Uh, my complaint is it doesn't really snap in there. It just fits in there. So if you really floor the gas, it's probably going to pop out. So a few drops of Loctite are required in the corners to really hold it in there, um, which I don't love. Loctite should not be used in an application like this, but there's no way around it. So that allows me to put on this piece of trim and finish the interior. So we've got a nice new several hundred dollar dial shift knob, uh, our black birch anthracite everywhere, clean the hell out of those buttons, moved over the ashtray after cleaning that out. That towel was brown afterwards, not because the car's been smoked in, just because of all the food and drink that it's filled in there. This guy's new, this is new, this is new, this is new used. Uh, this is out of my used inventory. I took the boot out, cleaned everything with leather, Z9 leather cleaner and uh, Swiss Vax leather milk conditioner. Uh, before this was wood, of course, so that had to go to leather. And the interiors come a long ways. Now it can still benefit from some leather work, touch up, or I don't know if it's re-dyeing or whatever that's going to look like. Rear headrests are in today. Um, those are used from Adam out in Maryland. Ten times better than what was in there, which were just falling apart all the... Uh, stitching had failed and it was coming open. So interior's looking pretty good. I want to work on this more, see if we can get rid of that ring. You can kind of see a silhouette of that. Somebody had something stuck up there for a while and everything is just really dusty. So it's going to need some detailing. The next project here is a dumb one. The seat belt is supposed to have a little black button thing in it that prevents the belt from falling down lower than maybe here. And that's missing, so the belt falls all the way down to the seat trim. And I have the new button. There's a special tool to put it in. BMW doesn't have it. It's four weeks away in Germany. I don't know if I want to waste $45 on that. They say they just heat it up a little bit and use pliers and just snap the thing in there, and it's kind of a plastic rivet. So I'll try my hand at that, probably ruin the piece, and then end up buying the tool. Got some quotes for the uh, body work over here. They want to repaint the entire left side of the car, going all the way back to the fender because there's some damage there. That'll probably polish out of the light. They say this is filler and that this door's been repaired before. And now that they say that, I can feel that. It like flares out at the edge. It should not do that. This, they say, is all repairable. They can do PDR here, repaint this, repaint the handle. And... Uh, they think they can take that dent out of the body line. So that's cool. Earlier today, Sergio pulled the transmission off this 2000. I think it's a 2000. It is carbon black M5. Transmission's out. It's going to the sublet tomorrow to get resealed and have all of its seals and gaskets replaced. Got to look at the flywheel. Um, it's not exactly pretty. That's just all uh, from the surface overheating. But I can't reach in there right now. But the, the more worrisome part is if you grab the, the back half mass of the flywheel, it moves a lot from front to back and it's twisting too much as well. So that flywheel is probably original. Uh, it's not always been treated with kindness and it's going to have to be replaced. We'll have one tomorrow. I think the work scope will be increasing to include uh, differential bushings, differential reseal. I have not yet gotten a look at his drive shaft here. But he's got a noisy center support bearing as well. 
just going to love to hear that. I think the flex disc was okay, and that's an original CV. So and that's how this stuff goes. It's it's a can of worms. You take everything down, and, and every part you take out to get to the job you want, you then have to service as well. Here's the clutch disc. I'm seeing a lot of wear on the outside edge, but certainly still some life in that. Next project over here, the Canadian car took off the rear bumper today. Um, that was the one that was hit and damaged. Thankfully, everything else is fine. I see Sergio did a really nice job cleaning up the bodywork under the bumper. Not that that's important. It's just a nice thing to do while we're here. No damage over here to the quarter panel. Fender liner's fine. This guide mount seems totally fine, um, which is great. So we'll have the new bumper back from the paint shop tomorrow with the old diffuser that has been repainted. So that'll be going on tomorrow. Then we had two other complaints while the car was here. He said some of the rear speakers are buzzing. I adjusted the parcel shelf and his DSP settings and fixed that issue. Thing two, he had some squeaky brakes. We uh, went out and bed the new pads and rotors in again. A little harder this time and the squeaks are all gone. Thing three, we weren't really happy with how the parking brake came out before. So the other day we just put new shoes in there and it's working great now. Still no windshield installers for Anthracite. They're trying to source a genuine BMW glass, which could be tomorrow or... We're talking about next week already, but a new secondary air pump went in, I think, yesterday. I don't remember filming any of that, but that's in. Uh, we haven't started it yet to see how quiet it is, but it should be real nice and quiet. And lastly, today we worked on the X5, which is back at the house now, but we replaced the left side uh, level sensor or, or level sender unit. And after that, the gas gauge came back up and, and was reading about three quarters, which I think is close to where it is. We're just going to have to drive it, run it down, put fuel in it, see what happens. But that's all I got. Um, time to go home, get the only food that's still open for dinner, crash on the couch for a little bit. I love leaving at this hour, uh, just after 10 o'clock, and that there's no traffic. It's super smooth and quiet. There's no one on the road. Just get in the middle lane, set the cruise at 80, put on some smooth jazz, and listen just how quiet and refined the E39 540 is. It is blowing me away how much I like this car. I expected to kind of think like, oh, I'm going to have to take the 540. It's going to rain. Now it's like, ooh, I get to drive the 540. It's just such a gentleman's luxury car. And for my use case right now, uh, having 1% battery in my head left and just wanting to get home comfortably, quietly, um, still with power if I want it. How about I turn the lights on so I can see where the freaking door lock is? It is perfect. I, I can't think of, yeah, Tesla would be quieter and faster, but it's not fun. It's not smells like weed out here. It's not fun. It's not enjoyable. This thing is just all of that, and it's a pleasure.